Part One of Antigone by Sophocles, translated by Francis Store. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae. Antigone, daughter of Oedipus and sister of Polynices and Eteocles. Read by Elizabeth Clutt. Ismene. Read by Ariel Lipshaw. Creon, king of Thebes, read by Bruce Peary. Haman, son of Creon, betrothed to Antigone, read by M. B. Eurydice, wife of Creon, read by Lucy Perry. Tiresias, a prophet, read by Martin Giessen. Chorus of Elders from Thebe, read by Lars Rolander. Guard, read by Algie Pug. Messenger. Read by David Goldfarb. Second Messenger. Read by Lars Rolander. Part One. Antigone and Ismene before the palace gates. Ismene, sister of my blood and heart, seest thou how Zeus would in our lives fulfil the weird of Oedipus, a world of woes? For what of pain, affliction, outrage, shame is lacking in our fortunes, thine and mine? And now, this proclamation of to-day made by our captain-general to the state, what can its purport be? Didst hear and heed, or art thou deaf when friends are banned as foes? To me, Antigone, no word of friends has come, or glad or grievous, since we twain were reft of our two brethren in one day by double fratricide, and since i' the night our argive leaguers fled, no later news has reached me, to in spirit or deject. I know twas so, and therefore summoned thee beyond the gates to breathe it in thine ear. What is it? Some dark secret stirs thy breast. What but the thought of our two brothers dead, the one by Creon graced with funeral rites, the other disappointed? Ateocles he hath consigned to earth, as fame reports, with obsequies that use and wont ordain, so gracing him among the dead below. But Polynices, a dishonoured course, so by report the royal edict runs, no man may bury him or make lament, must leave him tombless and unwept, a feast for kites to scent afar and swoop upon. Such is the edict, if report speak true, of Creon, our most noble Creon, aimed at thee and me, I, me too, and anon he will be here to promulgate, for such as have not heard his mandate. Tis in sooth no passing humour, for the edict says whoe'er transgresses shall be stoned to death. So stands it with us. Now, tis thine to show if thou art worthy of thy blood, or base. But how, my rash fond sister, in such case can I do anything to make or mar? Say, wilt thou aid me and abet? Decide. In what bold venture, what is in thy thought? Lend me a hand to bear the corpse away. What? Bury him despite the interdict? My brother! And though thou deny him thine, no man shall say that I betrayed a brother. Wilt thou persist, though Creon has forbid? What right has he to keep me from mine own? Bethink thee, sister, of our father's fate abhorred dishonoured self-convinced of sin blinded himself his executioner think of his mother wife ill-sorted names done by a noose herself had twined to death and last our hapless brethren in one day both in a mutual destiny involved self-slaughtered both the slayer and the slain bethink thee sister we are left alone Shall we not perish wretchedest of all, if in defiance of the law we cross a monarch's will? Weak women, think of that, not framed by nature to contend with men. Remember this, too, that the stronger rules. We must obey his orders, these or worse. Therefore I plead compulsion and entreat the dead to pardon. I perforce obey the powers that be. Tis foolishness, I ween, to overstep in aught the golden mean. I urge no more. Nay, wert thou willing still, I would not welcome such a fellowship. Go thine own way. Myself will bury him. How sweet to die in such employ, to rest, sister and brother linked in love's embrace, a sinless sinner banned a while on earth, but by the dead commended, 
and with them I shall abide for ever. As for thee, scorn, if thou wilt, the eternal laws of heaven. I scorn them not, but to defy the state or break her ordinance I have no skill. A specious pretext. I will go alone to lap my dearest brother in the grave. My poor fond sister, how I fear for thee! Oh, waste no fears on me. Look to thyself. At least let no man know of thine intent, but keep it close and secret, as will I. Oh, tell it, sister. I shall hate thee more if thou proclaim it not to all the town. Thou hast a fiery soul for numbing work. I pleasure those whom I would liefest please. If thou succeed, but thou art doomed to fail. When strength shall fail me, yes, but not before. But if the venture's hopeless, why essay? Sister, forbear, or I shall hate thee soon, and the dead man will hate thee too, with cause. Say I am mad, and give my madness rein to wreck itself. The worst that can befall is but to die an honourable death. Have thine own way, then. Tis a mad endeavour. Yet to thy lovers thou art dear as ever. Exeunt. Sunbeam of all that ever dawn upon, our seven-gated Thebes, the brightest ray. O eye of golden day, how fair thy light o'er Dirk's fountain shone, speeding upon their headlong homeward course. Far quicker than they came, the Argive force, putting to flight the argent shields, the host with scutcheons white. Against our land the proud invader came, to vindicate fell Polynike's claim, like to an eagle swooping low, on pinions white as new fallen snow, with clanging scream a horse tail plume his crest, the aspiring lord of Argos onward pressed. Hovering around our city walls he waits, his spearman raven at our seven gates, but ere torch our crown of towers could burn, ere they had tasted of our blood they turn, forced by the dragon in the rear. The din of Ares panic struck they hear. For Seb so hates the braggart's boast, beheld that gold bespangled host, as at the gold the pain they upraise, he struck them with his forked lightning blaze. To earthy from earth rebounding, down he crashed, the firebrand from his impious hand was dashed. As like a Bacchic reveller on he came, Outbreathing hate and flame, And tottered elsewhere in the field, Here there great Aria like a war-horse wheeled, Beneath his car down thrust, Our foemen bit the dust. Seven captains at our seven gates, Thundered for each a champion waits, Each left behind his armor bright, Trophy for Sevs who turns the fight, save two alone that ill-starred pair, one mother to one father bear, who lance in rest, one gainst the other, drave and both perished, brother slain by brother. Now victory to Thebes returns again, and smiles upon her chariot-circled plain. Now let feast and festal, should memories of war blot out, let us to the temple's throng, dance and sing the live night long. God of Thebes, lead thou the round, Bacchus shaker of the ground. Let us end our revels here, lo, Creon, our new lord draws near, crowned by this strange chance our king, what I marvel pondering. Why this summons? Wherefore call us his elders one and all, Bidding us with him debate On some grave concern of state? Enter Creon. Elders, the gods have righted once again Our storm-tossed ship of state, now safe in port. But you by special summons I convened As my most trusted counsellors. First, because I knew you loyal to Laius of old, Again, when Oedipus restored our state, both while he ruled and when his rule was o'er, ye still were constant to the royal line. 
now that his two sons perished in one day brother by brother murderously slain by right of kinship to the princes dead i claim and hold the throne and sovereignty yet tis no easy matter to discern the temper of a man his mind and will till he be proved by exercise of power and in my case if one who reigns supreme swerve from the highest policy tongue-tied by fear of consequence that man i hold and ever held the basest of the base and i condemn the man who sets his friend before his country for myself i call to witness zeus whose eyes are everywhere if i perceive some mischievous design to sap the state i will not hold my tongue nor would i reckon as my private friend a public foe well knowing that the state is the good ship that holds our fortunes all farewell to friendship if she suffers wreck such is the policy by which i seek to serve the commons and conformably i have proclaimed an edict as concerns the sons of oedipus eteocles who in his country's battle fought and fell the foremost champion duly bury him with all observances and ceremonies that are the guerdon of the heroic dead but for the miscreant exile who returned minded in flames and ashes to blot out his father's city and his father's gods and glut his vengeance with his kinsmen's blood or drag them captive at his chariot wheels for polynices tis ordained that none shall give him burial or make mourn for him but leave his corpse unburied to be meat for dogs and carrion crows a ghastly sight so am i purposed never by my will shall miscreants take precedence of true men but all good patriots alive or dead shall be by me preferred and honoured son of menorceps thus thou willst to deal with him who loathed and him who loved our state thy word is law thou canst dispose of us the living as thou wilt, as of the dead see then ye execute what i ordain on younger shoulders lay this grievous charge fear not i have posted guards to watch the corpse what further duty wouldst thou lay on us not to connive at disobedience no man is mad enough to court his death the penalty is death yet hope of gain hath lured men to their ruin oftentimes enter guard my lord i will not make pretence to pant and puff as some light-footed messenger in sooth my soul beneath its pack of thought made many a halt and turned and turned again for conscience plied her spur and curb by turns why hurry headlong to thy fate poor fool she whispered then again, if Creon learn this from another, thou wilt rue it worse. Thus leisurely I hastened on my road. Much thought extends a furlong to a league. But in the end the forward voice prevailed to face thee. I will speak, though I say nothing. For plucking courage from despair, methought, let the worst hap thou canst but meet thy fate what is thy news why this despondency let me premise a word about myself i neither did the deed nor saw it done nor were it just that i should come to harm thou art good at parry and canst fence about some matter of grave import as is plain the bearer of dread tidings needs must quake then sirrah shoot thy bolt and get thee gone well it must out the corpse is buried some one e'en now besprinkled it with thirsty dust performed the proper ritual and was gone what sayest thou who hath dared to do this thing i cannot tell for there was ne'er a trace of pick or mattock hard unbroken ground without a scratch or rut of chariot wheels no sign that human hands had been at work when the first sentry of the morning watch gave the alarm we all were terror-stricken the corpse had vanished not interred in earth 
but strewn with dust, as if by one who sought to avert the course that haunts the unburied dead. Of hound or ravening jackal, not a sign. Thereat rose an angry war of words. Guard railed at guard, and blows were like to end it, for none was there to part us, each in turn suspected, but the guilt brought home to none from lack of evidence. We challenged each the ordeal, or to handle red-hot iron, or pass through fire, affirming on our oath our innocence. We neither did the deed ourselves, nor know who did or compassed it. Our quest was at a standstill, when one spake, and bowed us all to earth like quivering reeds, for there is no gainsaying him, or way to escape perdition. Ye are bound to tell the king, ye cannot hide it, so he spake, and he convinced us all. So lots were cast, and I, unlucky scapegoat, drew the prize. So here I am, unwilling, and withal unwelcome. No man cares to hear ill news. I had misgivings from the first, my liege, of something more than natural at work. Oh, cease, you vex me with your babblement. I am like to think you dote in your old age. Is it not arrant folly to pretend that gods would have a thought for this dead man? Did they forsooth award him special grace, and as some benefactor bury him, who came to fire their hallowed sanctuaries, to sack their shrines, to desolate their land and scout their ordinances? Or perchance the gods bestow their favours on the bad? No, no. I have long noted malcontents who wagged their heads and kicked against the yoke, misliking these my orders and my rule. Tis they, I warrant, who suborned my guards by bribes. Of evils current upon earth, the worst is money. Money tis that sacks cities and drives men forth from hearth and home, warps and seduces native innocence, and breeds a habit of dishonesty. But they who sold themselves shall find their greed outshot the mark, and rue it soon or late. Yea, as I still revere the dread of Zeus, by Zeus I swear, except ye find and bring before my presence here the very man who carried out this lawless burial, death for your punishment shall not suffice. Hanged on a cross, alive ye first shall make confession of this outrage. This will teach you what practices are like to serve your turn. There are some villainies that bring no gain. For by dishonesty the few may thrive, the many come to ruin and disgrace. May I not speak, or must I turn and go without a word? Begone! Canst thou not see that e'en this question irks me? Where, my lord? Is it thy ears that suffer? or thy heart. Why seek to probe and find the seat of pain? I gall thine ears, this miscreant thy mind. What an inveterate babbler! Get thee gone! Babbler, perchance, but innocent of the crime. Twice guilty, having sold thy soul for gain. Alas! How sad when reasoners reason wrong! Go quibble with thy reason. If thou fail'st to find these malefactors, Thou shalt own the wages of ill-gotten gains is death. Exit Creon. I pray he may be found, but caught or not, and fortune must determine that, thou never shalt see me here returning, that is sure. For past all hope or thought I have escaped, and for my safety owe the gods much thanks. Exit Guard. Many wonders there be, but not more wonders than man. Over the surging sea, with a whitening south wind wan, through the foam of the firth man makes his perilous way, and the eldest of deities earth that knows not toil nor decay, ever he furrows and scores, as his team year in year out, with breed of the yoked horse the ploughshare turneth about. The light-witted birds of the air, the beasts of the weld and the wood, he traps with his woven snare, and the broad of the briny flood. Master of cunning he, the savage bull and the hart, who roams the mountain free, 
are tamed by his infinite art and the shaggy rough-maned steed is broken to bear the bit speech and the wind-swift speed of counsel and civic wit he hath learned for himself all these and the arrowy rain to fly and the nipping airs that freeze neath the open winter sky he hath provision for all fell plague he hath learned to endure safe whatever may befall yet for death he hath found no cure passing the wildest flight thought are the cunning and skill that guide man now to the light but now to counsels of ill if he honors the laws of the land and reveres the gods of the state proudly his city shall stand but a cityless outcast i rate who so bold in his pride from the path of right doth depart never may i sit by his side or share the thoughts of his heart what strange vision meets my eyes fills me with a wild surprise sure i know her sure tis she the maid antigone hapless child of hapless sire didst thou recklessly conspire madly brave the king's decree therefore are they hailing thee enter guard bringing antigone here is the culprit taken in the act of giving him burial but where's the king there from the palace he returns in time enter creon why is my presence timely what has chanced no man my lord should make a vow that if he ever swears he will not do a thing his afterthoughts belie his first resolve when from the hailstorm of thy threats i fled i swear thou wouldst not see me here again but the wild rapture of a glad surprise intoxicates and so i'm here forsworn and here's my prisoner caught in the very act decking the grave no lottery this time this prize is mine by right of treasure trove so take her judge her rack her if thou wilt she's thine my liege but i may rightly claim hence to depart well quit of all these ills say how didst thou arrest the maid and where burying the man there's nothing more to tell hast thou thy wits or knowest thou what thou sayest i saw this woman burying the corpse against thy orders is that clear and plain but how was she surprised and caught in the act it happened thus no sooner had we come driven from thy presence by those awful threats than straight we swept away all trace of dust and bared the clammy body then we sat high on the ridge to windward of the stench while each man kept his fellow alert and rated roundly the sluggard if he chanced to nap so all night long we watched until the sun stood high in heaven and his blazing beams smote us a sudden whirlwind then upraised a cloud of dust that blotted out the sky and swept the plain and stripped the woodlands bare and shook the firmament we closed our eyes and waited till the heaven-sent plague should pass at last it ceased and lo there stood this maid a piercing cry she uttered sad and shrill as when the mother bird beholds her nest robbed of its nestling even so the maid wailed as she saw the body stripped and bare and cursed the ruffians who had done this deed anon she gathered handfuls of dry dust then holding high a well-wrought brazen urn thrice on the dead she poured a lustral stream we at the sight swooped down on her and seized our quarry undismayed she stood and when we taxed her with the former crime and this she disowned nothing i was glad and grieved for tis most sweet to escape oneself scot-free and yet to bring disaster to a friend is grievous take it all in all i deem a man's first duty is to serve himself speak girl with head bent low and downcast eyes dost thou plead guilty or deny the deed guilty i did it i deny it not to guard sirrah be gone whither thou wilt and thank thy luck that thou hast scaped a heavy charge 
to antigone now answer this plain question yes or no wast thou acquainted with the interdict i knew all knew how should i fail to know and yet wert bold enough to break the law yea for these laws were not ordained of zeus and she who sits enthroned with gods below justice enacted not these human laws nor did i deem that thou a mortal man couldst by a breath annul and override the immutable unwritten laws of heaven they were not born to-day nor yesterday they die not and none knoweth whence they sprang i was not like who feared no mortal's frown to disobey these laws and so provoke the wrath of heaven i knew that i must die e'en hadst thou not proclaimed it and if death is thereby hastened i shall count it gain for death is gain to him whose life like mine is full of misery thus my lot appears not sad but blissful for had i endured to leave my mother's son unburied there i should have grieved with reason but not now and if in this thou judgest me a fool methinks the judge of follies not acquit a stubborn daughter of a stubborn sire this ill-starred maiden kicks against the pricks well let her know the stubbornest of wills are soonest bended as the hardest iron or heated in the fire to brittleness flies soonest into fragments shivered through a snaffle curbs the fieriest steed and he who in subjection lives must needs be meek but this proud girl in insolence well schooled first overstepped the established law and then a second and worse act of insolence she boasts and glories in her wickedness now if she thus can float authority unpunished i am woman she the man but though she be my sister's child or nearer of kin than all who worship at my hearth nor she nor yet her sister shall escape the utmost penalty for both i hold as arch-conspirators of equal guilt bring forth the older even now i saw her within the palace frenzied and distraught the workings of the mind discover oft dark deeds in darkness schemed before the act more hateful still the miscreant who seeks when caught to make a virtue of a crime wouldst thou do more than slay thy prisoner not i thy life is mine and that's enough why dally then to me no word of thine is pleasant god forbid it e'er should please nor am i more acceptable to thee and yet how otherwise had i achieved a name so glorious as by burying a brother so my townsmen all would say were they not gagged by terror manifold a king's prerogative and not the least that all his acts and all his words are law of all these thebans none so deems but thou these think as i but bait their breath to thee hast thou no shame to differ from all these to reverence kith and kin can bring no shame was his dead foeman not thy kinsman too one mother bear them and the self-same sire why cast a slur on one by honouring one the dead man will not bear thee out in this surely if good and evil fare alive the slain man was no villain but a brother the patriot perished by the outlaw's brand nathless the realms below these rites require not that the base should fare as do the brave who knows if this world's crimes are virtues there not even death can make a foe a friend my nature is for mutual love not hate die then and love the dead if thou must no woman shall be the master while i live enter ismene lo from out the palace gate weeping o'er her sister's fate comes ismene see her brow once serene beclouded now see her beauteous face overspread with a flush of angry red woman who like a viper unperceived didst harbour in my house and drain my blood two plagues i nurtured blindly so it proved to sap my throne say didst thou too abet this crime or dost abjure all privity i did the deed if she will have it so and with my sister claim to share the guilt that were unjust thou wouldst not act with me at first and i refused thy partnership 
but now thy bark is stranded i am bold to claim my share as partner in the loss who did the deed the underworld knows well a friend in word is never friend of mine o oh, sister scorn me not but let me share thy work of piety and with thee die claim not a work in which thou hadst no hand one death sufficeth wherefore shouldst thou die what would life profit me bereft of thee ask creon he's thy kinsman and best friend why taunt me find'st thou pleasure in these gibes tis a sad mockery if indeed i mock o oh, say if i can help thee even now no save thyself i grudge not thy escape is e'en this boon denied to share thy lot yea for thou chosest life and i to die thou canst not say that i did not protest well some approved thy wisdom others mine but now we stand convicted both alike fear not thou livest i died long ago then when i gave my life to save the dead both maids methinks are crazed one suddenly has lost her wits the other was born mad yea so it falls sire when misfortune comes the wisest even lose their mother wit if faith thy wit forsook thee when thou madest thy choice with evil doers to do ill what life for me without my sister here say not thy sister here thy sister's dead what wilt thou slay thy own son's plighted bride ay let him raise seed from other fields no new espousal can be like the old a plague on trolls who court and woo our sons o oh, haman how thy sire dishonours thee a plague on thee and thy accursed bride what wilt thou rob thine own son of his bride tis death that bars this marriage not his sire so her death warrant it would seem is sealed by you as first by me off with them guards and keep them close henceforward let them learn to live as women use not roam at large for e'en the bravest spirits run away when they perceive death pressing on life's heels thrice blessed are they who never tasted pain if once the curse of heaven attained the race the infection lingers on and speeds apace age after age and each the cup must drain so when etesian blasts from thrace downpour sweep over the blackening main and world to land from ocean's cavernous depth his oaths and sand billow on billow thunders on the shore on the lava sea day i see descending woe upon woe from days of old some god laid on the race a malison and his rod scored his each age with sorrows never ending the light that dawned upon its last born sun is vanished and the bloody axe of fate has felled the goodly tree that blossomed late o oedipus by reckless pride undone thy might o Zeus, what mortal power can quell not sleep that lays all else beneath its spell nor moons that never tire untouched by time throned in the dazzling light that crowns olympus height thou reignest king omnipotent sublime past present and to be all bow to thy decree all that exceeds the mean by fate is punished love or hate hope flits about never wearying wings profit to some to some light loves she brings but no man knoweth how her gifts may turn till neath his feet the treacherous ashes burn sure twas a sage inspired that spake this word if evil good appear to any fate is near and brief the respite from her flaming sword hither comes in angry mood haemon latest of thy brood is it for his bride he's grieved or her marriage bed deceived doth he make his mourn for thee made forlorn antigone enter haemon soon shall we know better than seer can tell learning my fixed decree anent thy bride thou meanest not son to rave against thy sire 
knowest not what e'er we do is done in love o oh, father i am thine and i will take thy wisdom as the helm to steer withal therefore no wedlock shall by me be held more precious than thy loving governance well spoken so right-minded sons should feel in all deferring to a father's will for tis the hope of parents they may rear a brood of sons submissive keen to avenge their father's wrongs and count his friends their own but who begets unprofitable sons he verily breeds trouble for himself and for his foes much laughter son be warned and let no woman fool away thy wits ill fares the husband mated with a shrew and her embraces very soon wax cold for what can wound so surely to the quick as a false friend so spew and cast her off bid her go find a husband with the dead for since i caught her openly rebelling of all my subjects the one malcontent i will not prove a traitor to the state she surely dies go let her if she will appeal to zeus the god of kindred for if thus i nurse rebellion in my house shall not i foster mutiny without for whoso rules his household worthily will prove in civic matters no less wise but he who overbears the laws and thinks to overrule his rulers such a one i never will allow whomever the state appoints must be obeyed in everything but small and great just and unjust alike i warrant such a one in either case would shine as king or subject such a man would in the storm of battle stand his ground a comrade leal and true but anarchy what evils are not wrought by anarchy she ruins states and overthrows the home she dissipates and routs the embattled host while discipline preserves the ordered ranks therefore we must maintain authority and yield no title to a woman's will better if needs be men should cast us out than hear it said a woman proved his match to me unless old age have dulled wits thy words appear both reasonable and wise father the gods implant in mortal men reason the choicest gift bestowed by heaven tis not for me to say thou errest nor would i arraign thy wisdom if i could and yet wise thoughts may come to other men and as thy son it falls to me to mark the act the words the comments of the crowd the commons stand in terror of thy frown and dare not utter aught that might offend but i can overhear their muttered plaints know how the people mourn this maiden doomed for noblest deeds to die the worst of deaths when her own brother slain in battle lay unsepulchred she suffered not his corpse to lie for carrion birds and dogs to maul should not her name they cry be writ in gold such the low murmurings that reach my ear o oh, father nothing is by me more prized than thy well-being for what higher good can children covet than their sire's fair fame as fathers too take pride in glorious sons therefore my father cling not to one mood and deem not thou art right all others wrong for whoso thinks that wisdom dwells with him that he alone can speak or think aright such oracles are empty breath when tried the wisest man will let himself be swayed by others wisdom and relax in time see how the trees beside a stream in flood save if they yield to force each spray unharmed but by resisting perish root and branch the mariner who keeps his main sheet taut and will not slacken in the gale is like to sail with thwarts reversed keel uppermost relent then and repent thee of thy wrath for if one young in years may claim some sense i'll say tis best of all to be endowed with absolute wisdom but if that's denied and nature takes not readily that ply next wise is he who lists to sage advice if he says aught in season heed him king to hamon heed thou thy sire too both have spoken well 
what would you have us at our age be schooled lessened in prudence by a beardless boy i plead for justice father nothing more weigh me upon my merit not my years strange merit this to sanction lawlessness for evildoers i would urge no plea is not this made an arrant lawbreaker the theban commons with one voice say no what shall the mob dictate my policy tis thou methinks who speakest like a boy am i to rule for others or myself a state for one man is no state at all the state is his who rules it so tis held as monarch of a desert thou wouldst shine this boy methinks maintains the woman's cause if thou beest woman yes my thoughts for thee o reprobate wouldst wrangle with thy sire because i see thee wrongfully perverse and am i wrong if i maintain my rights talk not of rights thou spurnst the dew of heaven o oh, heart corrupt a woman's minion thou slave to dishonour thou wilt never find me thy speech at least was all a plea for her and thee and me and for the gods below living the maid shall never be thy bride so she shall die but one will die with her hast come to such a pass as threaten me what threat is this vain counsels to reprove vain fool to instruct thy betters thou shalt rue it wert not my father i had said thou errest play not the spaniel thou a woman's slave when thou dost speak must no man make reply this passes bounds by heaven thou shalt not rate and jeer and flout me with impunity off with the hateful thing that she may die at once beside her bridegroom in his sight think not that in my sight the maid shall die or by my side never shalt thou again behold my face hereafter go consort with friends who like a madman for their mate exit haemon end of part one